What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react to the top 10 things Canadians want me to know, apparently. <laughs> Canadians want me to know this, so I'm here. I'm, I'm here to answer the call. Uh, this uh, video really kind of stuck out to me, because I imagine it's probably referring to misunderstandings that Americans and other people have when they think of Canada. Uh, if not, I'm very interested to see from a Canadian's from a Canadian's point of view, what Canadians think the rest of the world needs to get straight, that we all think about Canada that is wrong. And honestly, I'd be fascinated to see what people think about America and some of the funny stuff. But anyway, this is Ca Canada's time to shine. I should stop being so <laughs> selfish. I'm here to indulge what the Canadians want me to know. So let's go. For this list, we're looking to clarify Canadian stereotypes, correct misconceptions, okay. or generally gush about things that we think you should know about this North American country. Okay. I'm Canadian. <laughs> Number 10. It's not winter all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is real. This is real. Uh, Americans do picture Canada as permanently winter. Is this not true? It's not true. When many people think of Canada, they picture blizzards and polar bears. And yeah. Don't forget the stereotype that all Canadians live in igloos. <laughs> okay, I actually don't. I didn't ever think that they live in, that Canadians live in igloos. Uh, yeah. My good friend Nantuck and I <laughs> would build an igloo <laughs> to protect ourselves. <laughs> Is this Jim Carrey doing a Canadian impression? I've never heard a Canadian accent that thick in my life. From polar bears and flying hockey pucks. Hockey, 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 hockey is probably going to be on this list. Although, don't Canadians genuinely love hockey? That's not even a stereotype. I think Canadians are big hockey fans. It's true that Canadian winters can be intense and long. Canada does warm up during the summer months. Igloos would be okay. pretty useless. There are many ways to describe the summer of 2012. Hot, dry, extreme. But if you're <laughs> feeling the burn, consider it a unifying Canadian experience. Like in many... I mean, yeah, America has winter and there's snow in lots of places and we have summer where it's not snow. Is this the same in Canada? Is Canada just like the same seasonality? For some reason I thought because it was north and things get colder that it would explain why Canada could be most of the time covered in snow, maybe all the time. I'm wrong though, I'm sorry. Any other countries, mm -hmm. Canadian seasons are varied and unique. Okay. Visit in the summer or fall, and you'll okay, be surprised okay. at just how warm it can get, especially in the southern part of the country. Though, huh. one thing right. is certainly true. Visiting Montreal in the winter can get a little slippery. Yeah, Number nine, but... Toronto is not the capital of the country. Right. Oh my gosh, I actually for I already forget what the cap- <laughs> I feel like I just learned this. I already forget what the capital of uh, Canada is. Because uh, when Americans think of Canada, the first city that comes to mind is Toronto and maybe Quebec. But Toronto for sure, actually. The more I think about it, if I took a poll of Americans, what is, what's the only city in Canada? They'd be like, ah, oh, Toronto. There's only one city in Canada, it's Toronto. It must be the capital. So I think this actually is something that a lot of Americans do believe. While there is a joke that they like to consider themselves the center of the universe, contrary to popular <laughs> belief, Toronto is not the capital of Canada. So, okay. uh, you guys doing anything fun while you're in town? Fun. In Toronto. <laughs> it is, however- what? I bet there is a lot of fun in Toronto. I've seen stuff in Toronto, in other videos. Toronto is fun, hey. The largest city in Canada by population, and the fourth largest in North uh. America just above Chicago. Oh, Toronto's the fourth biggest in North America? I didn't know that. It's huge then. The title <laughs> of Canadian capital goes to the much smaller and quieter Ottawa. How did we- 
Ottawa, Ottawa, yes, oh, Ottawa, get in my brain, Ottawa, get in there, I just learned that, uh, I don't know why I don't think of Ottawa, because <laughs> it's fun to say, Ottawa, uh, I was, I am aware of Ottawa, a lot, most Americans are, um, we just don't really know what goes on there, or that it's the capital, sorry, you end up with Ottawa. <laughs> So it is the capital of Canada. A lovely city dedicated mainly to being the center of government. Much like Washington, D.C., yeah, Ottawa yeah. often gets mocked for being boring. Suburban Ottawa is great. What? It has everything Brooklyn does. Really? Yes. Other than my... This narrator's being kind of... like he's, She's trying to roast Canada. She's like, Toronto, known for being super boring. Like... No one thinks that. No, no one actually thinks that. Who are these people? Ottawa, known for being super boring. Again, no one thinks that. No one, th no one thinks it's like the most incredible place ever, only because they don't know what's there. Uh, but they certainly don't think it's boring. So I, I don't know. This narrator is really trying to roast Ottawa. My job and my friends and my family, you. Interesting people, museums, restaurants. While not as exciting as Toronto, perhaps, Ottawa's charms are still not to be missed. Yeah. Ottawa, the Paris of Central Canada. <laughs> Number eight, a Canadian invented basketball. Really? Wow. Is this true? Wait, wait, huh? Huh? Basketball. Invented. Google, please confirm this. James Naismith. Da 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 da. Where were you? Canadian. Canadian American. Yeah, I mean, basketball is huge in America. I bet most Americans would tell you basketball was invented in America. For sure they would. It's probably our second biggest sport behind football. Not soccer, football. <laughs> to be clear. Wow. Believe it or not, it was the Canadian James Naismith, a McGill University graduate, who invented this popular sport back in 1891. Wow. Naismith was a phys ed teacher at the YMCA International Training School in Springfield, Massachusetts. He struggled with a class of students who were disobedient and short-tempered due to being stuck inside all day thanks to a harsh winter. He resolved to create an indoor game to keep the students what? distracted. And if you think about, basketball is really an interesting sport. This guy had some creativity. He, because there's like the whole dribbling thing with your hand. I mean, I know that sounds obvious because basketball, basketball exists. But just think about basketball before it existed. Would you ever think, oh, well, I'll invent a little game where you dribble it with your hand and you throw it up in these hoops, they have backboards. It's honestly a pretty inventive game. And that would help them stay in shape. The end result? was basketball. A hundred yeah. years after James Naismith from Almont, Ontario invented it, basketball was being played by hundreds of millions of people around yeah. the world. Number seven, cool. Canadian bacon is just ham. There's Canadian bacon. Yeah, Canadian bacon. That is, an Amer that is such an American thing. I don't, <laughs> I never understood it because I don't eat bacon that often. Canadian bacon, it's just ham, right? And I, have, I had no idea why it was called Canadian bacon randomly throughout my life. Very randomly. People would just be like, oh yeah, we have some Canadian bacon. And I'd be like, Canadian bacon? What is that? Bacon. Canadian bacon. Yep, that's right. The term Canadian bacon is actually one made up by Americans. In Canada, yeah. it's known uh, yeah, right? yeah. as back bacon, which is a far more accurate term. Back bacon. But really, it's just ham. Just look at it. Does that really look like bacon? No. Huh. Yeah, it is just ham. That I was kind of aware of. I don't really eat Canadian bacon. Sorry, back bacon. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning uh, back bacon. But yeah, it's just ham. Let's just call it ham. Although it is kind of fun. It's the only thing in America that I can think of that has the that we named and it has the word Canada in it. So you know what? For the For the sake of Canada, let's keep it. I like it. And Canada agrees. If ham's Canadian bacon, then what the hell do you call bacon? Canadians take <laughs> their bacon seriously. And as such, oh. the fact that Canada has come to be associated with this term borders on being offensive to the Canadian culinary world. What? In all seriousness. What? What? Is that true? Why? Come on. I think it's fun. I always thought the name was fun, at least. It made it sound exotic. I was like, 
Oh, Canadian bacon. It's from Canada? Ooh, what is that? Oh, interesting. Real Canadian bacon is excellent if you live south of the border. So if you want a real taste of Canadian bacon, you'll just have to make the trip. Oh, Canadian bacon as in bacon from Canada, which for us would just be bacon. So <laughs> you could really get lost in this whole bacon verse if you uh, weren't, weren't careful. We highly recommend the maple glazed variety. No, you gave me Canadian bacon instead of bacon? This misdeed cannot go unpunished. <laughs> Number six, Tim Hortons isn't our only national coffee chain. Okay, I was wondering about this because I saw another video about cool stuff in Canada that I reacted to. And this Tim Hortons, this Tim Hortons. Go unpunished. Number six, Tim. Yeah, Tim Hortons. Sorry, <laughs> I wanted to make sure I got it right. It seems like a really cool place, but it also sounded like, gosh, it was the only coffee, fast food, general store, baked goods place in Canada, and they were just everywhere, and that was all you could get. Tim Hortons isn't our only national coffee chain. Okay. Sure. When you're in the mood for a quick double-double or a box of Timbits, Timmy's is a great place. Timbits? Double-double? What are these things? Timbits. Timbits. Oh, it's a food. Tim Hortons. Bite-sized morsels of our traditional donuts. Sounds good. Timbits. Who knew? ...to stop. Sure. When you're in the mood for a quick double-double or a... Double, 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 double. What is this? Double, 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 double. Uh, toil and trouble. <laughs> okay. Tim Hortons. A coffee? It's a coffee. Okay. Cool. Seems cool. I'm up to speed. I can go to a Tim Hortons now and kind of make my way through. I'd get coffee and donuts. For a box of Timbits, Timmy's is a great place to stop. Timmy's. It's just donuts, okay? They're like two for a loony. But it's not Canada's only coffee chain, or even its best. Okay. Second Cup is another of Canada's national coffee chains, and uh. some would argue it's much better, albeit oh. typically more expensive. It's pr it seems like Tim Hort Hortons? Oh my gosh, I can't remember. Tim Hortons. Okay, I do, I do know. Tim Hortons sounds like it's more of a general foods, baked goods and a coffee, kind of quick on the go. And this uh, second cup is kind of more coffee specialty, which would make sense if it's more expensive. It's kind of more if you want this fancy coffee. I, I get it. Is that your second cup of coffee? Uh, third. Why? You could also try Montreal-based Van Hoot, which has cafes across the province of Quebec. Van While competitive pricing, amazing marketing campaigns, and its place in pop culture has made Tim Hortons the reigning champ, you yeah. still got options. Plus, okay. we even have Starbucks. Ah, uh, Starbucks. I don't go there personally, but that's probably where almost every American who visits Canada ends up going. Out of fear, because they don't know what this Tim Hortons thing is. They're like, ah, oh, what, what do they sell there? It sounds like a hardware store. <laughs> is excellent. Number five, we have two official languages. Okay, it must be English and French. It must My be. My friend in Canada who got married way too young, they had to do their vows twice, once in French. They speak yeah. French there too? God, that place is a mess. The history of Canada <laughs> is shaped by both the English and the French. With right. The two both laying claim to parts of the land until the Seven Years' War, at the end of which yeah. France ceded its colony to the English. Thanks to the policies of official bilingualism enacted in the 20th century, both ah. languages are protected and represented today. That's cool. I don't think a lot of Canadians are actually taught to be fluent in French, to my understanding. Um, there are French-speaking parts of Canada, from what I know, but it would have been, it would be so cool if I lived in a place that was bilingual and I was taught two languages. I've always been so jealous that a lot of places in the rest of the world uh, tend to teach English as a second language. So they can, you know, people in Spain and France and Germany and everywhere over the world, they can communicate with Americans who travel there, but the Americans can't communicate with them because we're not taught a second language. So that's too bad, honestly. It's too bad. If it's Canada, just say the word. 
and then say it again in French. <laughs> These policies ensure that citizens can be served by the federal government in both languages. And okay. politicians seeking to lead the country typically learn both French and English. Leadership oh. is about bringing people of all different perspectives together. Okay. Je veux aussi rendre hommage oh. à Thomas Mulcair. While most of the Francophone wow. population lives in Quebec, there are many French-speaking communities across Canada, including right. a large one in New Brunswick. Au Québec, on travaille en français. Fine. That leaves the rest of Canada under my jurisdiction, with the possible exception of some areas of New Brunswick. Number. F yeah, I mean, we don't have too much of an equivalent here in America. There are a lot of Spanish speakers in America. I would definitely call that the second language of America, Spanish. That'd probably be the most useful thing for me to learn. So I think that's kind of similar with French in Canada. Four, Canada is pretty progressive. Okay. Compared to our neighbors, it often seems like Canada is lauded for being a progressive paradise. When I think ah. about Canada, I actually think of progressive. While it has its own share of social problems and debates, it is true that most of the fights on social issues that take such precedence in the American media have been solved in Canada. This mm. Yeah, America is still very much uh, at war with, with itself. Uh, not literally, but uh, verbally and politically and with our different ideals. Yeah, we are definitely nowhere close to solving a lot of probably stuff we should have solved by now. Although I won't get too far into that, but I do admire Canada uh, that seems to have gotten a grip and come to terms with a nice progressive outlook on lots of things and is moving things forward. I, I respect that. This is due in large part to stark differences between Canadian and American culture. Act yeah, yeah, that is important to note that there is a totally different culture. Access to abortion is almost a non-issue. Gay marriage has been legal since 2005, and even mm -hmm. the Conservative Party doesn't oppose it. You know, the strongest evidence for genuinely demonstrating a domestic partnership is to take a quick drive on up to Canada and legitimize your relationship. Legitimize? Get married. There are still many <laughs> problems in Canada, and it's by no means a progressive utopia. But the country should be okay. proud of all the progress it's already made. Yeah, I should be proud. That's actually very nice. We should move to Canada. Number three, not all police officers are Mounties. <laughs> yeah, this is a good one. Um, Americans, when they picture Canadian police, we do think of Mounties. We, we know of Mounties just by that word too, Mounties. I don't know if that's short for something, but we think of these, these individuals in red riding horses with the big hats. Yeah, we absolutely think of that when we think of Canada, honestly. Um, so I didn't actually know how that worked, if that was the Canadian police force, if every police in Canada was Mounties, or if they're a special unit, or what? Those officers dressed in red suits and great big hats are members of the RCMP, or the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Your cops uh... are called Mounties. <laughs> While Can uh, okay, they're like a special department, unit, whatever you want to call it, and they're called Mounties because they're mounted on horses! It makes so much sense! And, uh, yeah, okay, I, I totally believe it. There's probably just normal police, right? While Canada does indeed use Mounties on the federal level, cities and municipalities use regular police officers, as they do in most countries. Okay. Mounties enforce federal laws and will work closely with the provinces and municipalities in order to accomplish their goals. And okay, I didn't realize Mounties were actually uh, a federal level sort of policing force. Uh, I never realized it kind of worked like that. I really did think that Mounties existed keeping the peace, keeping law, you know, throughout Canada on horseback. I mean, I wish it was that way. It'd be kind of cool, you know? <laughs> no, I get, I get it, I get it. And their tasks include dealing with organized crime, drug trafficking, and border control, among many other federal offenses. Okay. So, yes, Canada does have Mounties, but no, they don't go around solving crimes on horseback. And the country <laughs> does rely heavily on municipal police forces as well. So the Mounties are just this team of badasses that you call in whenever you need, like, a special federal force. 
to come and force things. Okay, man, that's that's how I want. That's how I would package it. How I would boil it down to an American. That's what I'm just gonna tell them. Oh, they're this special, you know, killer policing force that lives in the shadows on horseback. <laughs> that's all I got from this video. Also, Mounties don't always dress like that either. Oh, uh, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, healthcare isn't free. It's paid for by taxes. Okay. This is, oh my gosh. This is just a huge point of contention in America that uh, healthcare, it's not free, nor is it really paid from, ta for, from taxes. It's not free and it's not paid for by taxes, really. So, uh, Canada has a huge leg up on America with this one, and uh, it really annoys a lot of Americans. I'd say the vast majority of Americans, because you have to purchase health care, plans, insurance, and uh, sometimes you go and get emergency health care administered, and you're still, your insurance only covers so much of it, and then the hospital can charge you sometimes outrageously life-crippling amounts of debt. So what's the point of having taxes in a government if that can happen to you, is what I would uh, pose as a question. But uh, yeah, I'd be perfectly happy to pay taxes and just have the taxes go towards our health care, like Canada does. That would be fantastic. I'm jealous. I'm a bit jealous. Ah, no, it says don't walk. Doesn't matter, they have free health care. <laughs> yeah, Americans do have a way of phrasing it like that when talking about other countries. Um, they do tend to say like, oh, their health care is free. It's free. No, we can't do that here in America because how would it just be free? It makes no sense. No, it, it's paid for by taxes. It makes sense. I'm rich. Often when talking about the great things in Canada, free health care is brought up. But that term is a bit of a mischaracterization. Yeah. Healthcare in Canada isn't somehow free. That'd make no sense. It's just paid yeah. for by taxpayer dollars. Yeah, that makes total sense. That makes a lot of sense. Because access to universal healthcare services is considered a right in Canada. Canada. Yeah. What? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I could go on and on about this one. My God. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea why the American system is the way it is. I do have an idea. It's because people want to make money. They want to make money. Healthcare companies, pharmaceutical companies want to make money in America, and they charge us for it. Whereas uh, in Canada, healthcare is a right, which it probably should be. That would be fantastic and uh, a great use of having government. Yeah, it's too bad. Is everyone going to have access to universal health care so no one has to choose between going bankrupt and treating a life-threatening illness? While some yeah. arguments persist about the best way to design and maintain a program of universal health care, and there are still complaints that Canada's system lags behind those in European countries, the mm. large majority of Canadians agree that it's been incredibly beneficial and oh. that health care is a great use of tax money. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. Ah, uh, can Canadians, can you just come talk to our government people? Can you just <laughs> talk some sense into them? I don't know why. You know, part of it is Americans are almost conditioned to think as a culture. We don't think about it. We're just like, ah, oh, this is the way it is. It's just the way it always is. And I'm guilty of that. But now, then I watch a video about things Canadians want me to know, and they bring up that uh, the healthcare is part of the taxation system and paid for, and it just jogs my brain. And I'm like, I wake up and I'm like, oh, wait, that sounds really good. <laughs> it's a healthcare. <laughs> Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Okay. Real maple syrup. I hate that fake old kind. What's the bad about being Canadian? Your milk comes in bags. <laughs> so yeah, apparently ketchup is so hot in Canada that they just through the artificial flavoring all over the uh... ketchup flavored chips really why why i do like ketchup i would try them <laughs> i'm acting like i'm ashamed of canada and i would i would try it i would try it uh but a lot of americans would be 
very disgusted by this. I'm borderline disgusted. I'm conflicted, but ketchup, <laughs> it's not something we have on chips. Yeah, chips here. Number one, not everyone has that stereotypical accent. Yes, the Canadian accent. I don't, uh, I don't notice it much. I watch Degrassi <laughs> sometimes when I was younger, and uh, that's in Canada. And the only thing I ever noticed was the word about and sorry. Sorry. Uh, those were the only two words that I ever noticed that there was a different inflection, a different emphasis on the pronunciation. So the Canadian as an, a whole accent, I don't think really exists much, especially not how Americans think of it. There's not going to be any fight without Scott Riles and the incredibly polite Canadian news team. <laughs> Sorry about that, eh? Well, the accent does exist. It's yeah, the word A, eh, saying A eh after everything. Canadians do not do that. I mean, unless I'm totally wrong. Canadians don't say A eh every other sentence. That's a huge thing. Americans do <laughs> totally think that. More common in rural areas. And even then, people okay. in the Maritimes and Newfoundland have their own distinct accent. They sometimes right. have a funny way of saying things like a boot. And the way they say a boot. A which sounds like, what's that, a boot? The A boot, yes, yes, exactly. The majority of Canadians you meet, who will likely be from the big cities, don't talk with that accent. In yeah. fact, they sound very similar to Americans from big cities. Yeah. What a weird thing for Canadian melodrama. What a weird thing for girls who say a boot. We will concede that Canadians do say the word A a lot, but it's often really? misused by those mocking Canada. I moved here from Canada, and they think I'm slow, eh? A is a- Wait, do Canadians say A? I was just- I was just saying this wasn't real. I don't have any Canadian friends. I don't interact with Canadians on a day-to-day -day basis, so... I wouldn't know for sure if they use A a lot. I just figured, based on what I've seen, it was kind of an exaggeration. It's another way of saying, right, or, you know, at the end yeah. of a sentence. Not yeah. a random word we just interject in the middle of conversations. Okay. Don't you learn something new today, eh? Come on, what do we look <laughs> like? Rookies? Sorry. Hi. Do you agree with our picks? Okay. Yeah, that was very interesting. Um, and very good list by, oh, Watch Mojo. I like them. And I liked this video. Very good. That was, that was a good video, uh, and it did have, it had several things in there that I actually was not aware of. Some of these are, some of the things like on this list were kind of classic American stereotypes of Canada being cold, saying A all the time, uh, you know, other sorts of things. <laughs> but some of these I had never really heard before, but it seems like... I don't know. At the end of the day, I still do think Canada and America are much more similar than a lot of people think. It's almost like how you can find differences between Americans state to state, region to region. Same with Canada. You can find differences in different regions of Canada. And it's almost like the differences between regions is almost... It's a little more amplified than that, but that's the difference between America and Canada. It's just like we're two, di two different regions, a little, you know, we're two different nations, so it's a little with a different history, so it's a little more different than that, but we have a lot of similarities. And, to be honest, a couple of funny differences. And I would honestly love to see, like, American stereotypes. What Canadians think of Americans and what we do. And stuff like that. That'd be so funny to me. Oh my gosh. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada, Canadian culture, Canadian things that I've never seen, feel free to subscribe for more. And uh, until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.